Okay, so now how does this work with this renewing your mind thing? Okay, Derek, we did this DVD before with changing your mind, and this comes in. Well, this is the setup for the lies, right? So how do we pull this back together? I've took you through the whole book of Romans, sort of, right? Romans 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we're going to 8, and Romans 8 says this. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, what does that mean? The Spirit is in you, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Wow. You mean I really can live a life that's peaceful? I can live a life that I'm not freaked out? I can live a life where I'm not stressed out? You've got it. You've got that freedom. You have that righteousness. If we could grab a glimpse of what it's like to think what's true, as opposed to buy into these lies that we're bought into, could it change everything? I think it could change everything. In summary, Satan's biggest lie is my performance plus other people's opinions equal my value and worth. And God says, no. Your worth and value comes totally from me. This can all go away. You can be free. Okay, now you're telling me, Derek, that I don't get my value and my worth from my performance. And you're also telling me that, well, my value doesn't come from other people's opinions. So does that mean I'm not supposed to work hard? Does that mean I'm not supposed to like, give it my best or something? Like it doesn't matter anymore? I never have to go to work again? Or I don't care about what other people think, so I don't care about them? All right, let's look at this. Here's a story. Let's say just... You're going to have to really imagine with me here for a minute. But let's say I'm Michael Jordan. Okay? Yeah, I know you're laughing back there, but let's say I am. Okay? And here I am, and I've got the basketball in my hand, and right here's the free throw line. And of course, it's the final game of the World Championships, and it's tied, and there's no time left on the clock, and I've got the basketball in my hand for a free throw. If I make this free throw, we're world champions. If I don't, we don't. So I sit there with the ball. And I've got two choices. So there's a stimulus. The world championship is on the line. I've got two choices to go. Here's the one direction I'm going to go. I'm going to say, uh-oh, what if I miss this shot? My coach is going to hate me. All my fans, they'll hate me. Oh my gosh, i got to make this shot. I could think, I'm concerned about other people's opinions. I could also say, <clears throat> Oh my gosh, I've been a great basketball player all this time. This is going to prove I'm not a very good basketball player. And then what? I could worry and connect my performance to my worth. Now, imagine this person sitting here saying all those things, and then imagine this. Imagine, on the other hand, he's decided to think this. <clears throat> Regardless if I make this shot or not, I'm righteous. Every fifth grade child in America knows I, Michael Jordan, am a righteous basketball player. Whether I make this shot or not isn't going to change my righteousness. Whether we win or lose this game is not going to change if I'm righteous or not. Now here's the big question, guys. Ironically, who performs better? Oh my. The one that's righteous. How weird is that? The one who's not concerned about performing 
connecting to his worth is the guy that can stand up to the free throw line and have an opportunity to perform at even a higher level. Wow. The paradox of God is that when we disconnect our value from our performance and other people's opinions, we actually at that point can perform better. At that point, we can actually connect better. See, I was going to go up to William and start talking to him, but I can't because I'm worried about what he's going to think of me. But if I'm not concerned about what he thinks about me, the message says this, I can be more careful. I can be more full of care. Because I can get rid of myself long enough to say, how are you doing, William? Wow. This paradox that God has for us is one that says, at the moment I disconnect my value with other people's opinions is the moment I can connect with them. One more example. My wife. Let's say I go home and she starts beating me up. Now I know you as, as husbands have never beat your wives up. Now I'm not talking physically, of course. I'm just talking verbally. And I'm sure wives in here have never really beat their husband up for anything. But let's just imagine that happened at my house. And let's say I go home and my wife starts beating me up. I can think my value doesn't connect with her opinion of me. Or I can think, oh my gosh, what's she thinking of me? Oh my gosh. And then what people the church going to think if she's, saying, oh, they're, she's upset with me or she's screaming at me? I hope this never gets out. I hope they're not putting the recorder on me right now because here she goes again and I don't know what I'm going to think. Now when she starts into me like that, what am I naturally going to do when I'm thinking those thoughts? I'm going to lash out, lash back. But what if in that moment I decided this? Her opinion of me is not connected to my worth. Do I have the courage at that moment to say, help me understand what you're thinking? Instead of trying to dig in and defend myself because I have value I'm trying to hold on to? Oh, wow. This frees us up to be connected. To actually perform at a higher level. At a level that God wants us to perform at, not for us anymore, but for us to just live in an obedience.